This is the story of one of my most stressful travel experiences ever. And he's gone. <laughs> Not only am I leaving the country where I've spent the last year, year and a half, and abandoning my dream to build a house here, there is absolutely no way that I would be able to afford buying anything like what I dream of. Not only am I shipping my truck to a whole other continent in a shipping container. So that's it. And not only am I attempting to start all over again in a very different country, I'm also transporting my beloved dog on an airplane for the first time while being told by everybody that he will be traumatized and will probably die. <sighs> So when I say that this was one of my most stressful travel experiences ever, I don't say that lightly. I mean, I've been traveling full time for the last six years, very adventurously. I've been to countries like Syria and Afghanistan and Yemen. I've been detained on more than one occasion, but this felt like a whole different ball game. <laughs> the wait is killing me. You'll be fine, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. But let's go back to the beginning. You know, it feels really, really strange to just have this. This is all that I have left, pretty much. I shipped Odyssey, my truck, back to Europe a couple of weeks ago and put a lot of stuff in the truck, but I'm not gonna see it for a long time. So this is all I have left for now. <laughs> this is pretty much most of my stuff at the moment. And it's chaos. <laughs> I guess one of the advantages of traveling full time is that a big move to another continent doesn't involve furniture or household goods. I left some of my stuff inside Odyssey, so that's being shipped over as we speak, and the rest should fit into a couple of suitcases. This feels a little bit, a little bit too heavy for my liking, but I guess we'll see. The next step was to prepare Vilk's crate for the upcoming flight. So Vilk has been inside the crate while I've been sticking these on and he's just fallen asleep. So these little um, posters are basically just a way to introduce Fiolk to whoever will be handling him and his crate at the airport. Um, they basically state his name, um, what kind of dog he is, my contact details, and um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to put them there to kind of make the crate feel like it contains someone's pet dog in it rather than, you know, just some cargo. Anyway, it was time to go. I had been invited to spend a couple of weeks on the island of Nantucket prior to my flight. So getting to the airport in Boston involved taking a ferry off the island and driving. And I want to give a quick shout out to Impact Crates who hooked us up with this amazing crate. It's all metal, which makes it super sturdy and secure. That gave me so much peace of mind knowing that Vilk will be safe inside it. You can check out the Impact website in the description box below. Oh, are you ready? You ready to go to the airport? Momo. <laughs> I still have to run a couple of errands before I get to the airport. And um, I need to get some AirPods, not AirPods, an AirTag, an AirTag, uh, to put in Vilk's crate. You're not gonna eat it? You promise? Okay, good boy. In the second half of this video, I'll tell you a little bit more about how I prepared Vilk for this pretty huge journey and address some of the most common fears and concerns that you guys had and that I had too, obviously. But for now, Vilk and I both need a good solid walk in the woods. You know what they say about forest bathing? Definitely a very, very long day today. Um, I'm nervous. I'm very nervous I have to admit I guess I've just never really flown with a dog have I and uh, I always knew that this day was coming but actually being here today just feels yeah I'm a little bit nerve-wracking I just hope that everything goes okay at the airport and I can just get on the plane and just get there you know you know there's one thing that dogs can teach us it's to live in the moment. Right now he's living in the moment. He doesn't even know what's coming. Doesn't care. He's just sniffing. Yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming. Okay, I'll just go with you. Back up. 
Back up. Back up. Hello. <laughs> Round. Good boy. You know that feeling when you have a big event or a test coming up and you just wish that you could press fast forward and be magically transported to a time when it's all over? Ah, uh, yeah. But I guess life isn't a movie, is it? So in times like this, I really wish I had started meditating. <sighs> so much traffic. <laughs> 10 miles in 40 minutes. It's kind of wild. Especially as I approached Boston Airport and got stuck in unexpected traffic for a good hour. Someone teach me how to breathe this out. Oh, there's so much traffic. It's crazy. Oh my God. Ugh. Don't make me arrive late. This is the one time I cannot be late for a flight. Eventually, I got there, though an hour later than expected. Not good. So I parked the truck in the parking lot, got all my luggage out, got the crate out, got the vehicle out, and I looked at the whole freaking mountain of stuff that I had with me, and I was like, how? on earth am I gonna carry this with me? So I put the suitcases on top of the crate, took the dog by the lead and pushed the crate. I'm so happy it has wheels. And um, then I walked to the elevator and guess what? A very nice Brazilian man offered to help me. He was there to pick up his mom's suitcase. Thank you so much, kind man. I don't know your name, but I really appreciate you helping me. <laughs> so he pushed the crate while I, you know, walked with vehicle. We got to the terminal building. I took Vilk out for his last potty break. One last potty break on American soil. And then we went to check in. Well, we're here. Um, I'm just waiting for check in. I'm the next person in line. Vilk is being a really, really good boy. He's behaving himself so well. He's so calm. So I think he's gonna do well. I mean, it's gonna be hard for him, I think, but let's just get through the check in, get on that flight. Yeah, let's check in. That's the next step. Everybody was so nice at check in. They were super friendly with Vilk, really understanding of me and the fact that I was alone with all that stuff. So they took us into this special area where Vilk and his crate got inspected by the TSA. Um, the guy who was doing the inspection was super nice. Everybody was really, really nice. And KLM staff, oh my God, they were so amazing. I'm just, they were so understanding and so helpful. Um, so yeah, everybody loved Vilk and they checked the crate. It's all good and, you know, secure and it was big enough for him. And that was it, you know, they checked the documents that I had and then they took him. They wheeled him off to the baggage area. <laughs> and he's gone. <laughs> All good. They took the crate, they had a look at the, the documents and it's, that's it. When you tell people that you're gonna be flying with your dog and he's gonna be flying in the crate, there's one thing that a lot of people tell you and it's that your dog will come out changed you know that he will like that the crate and the plane will like break him and break his spirit and break his character and it's really terrible for the dog and it's like the worst thing that you can possibly say to someone that's traveling with a dog <laughs> like nobody wants to hear that you know so i am just really really looking forward to seeing Vilk again in about nine hours from now and just reuniting <laughs> I am very, very nervous, but also very, very excited. It'll be fine. 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 <laughs> and so, sitting there waiting to board, I started to rationalize, look up statistics, replay the voice of the vet inside my head. It's all gonna be fine. Be rational. It's just a flight. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yep. <sighs> Two glasses of red wine later, I felt marginally less anxious. Couldn't help myself. 
This is just one of the reasons why I know I couldn't be a human mom. This level of worry and anxiety for another living being, but like all the time, forever, I think this is all that I'm willing to sign up for. On board, once I sat down, something amazing happened. I'm not kidding you guys, the captain just came over to my seat and told me that Bjork is on board. It was so nice, I can't believe it. <laughs> so that just made me feel a whole lot better. Clearly, I have a lot of experience with dogs here at KLM and I'm just so grateful. This is not an ad for them at all. I'm just really, really grateful. And we were off. We did have some turbulence, so I just hoped it didn't shake up Vilk's crate too much. And although time went by real slow on this flight, eventually we began our descent to Amsterdam. Okay, we're in Amsterdam. And uh, just about to get to the lowest point of the luggage hall. Which uh, is where I'm supposed to meet Phil. I wonder how he's doing. Apparently, they bring out the dogs first ahead of any other luggage. So, might already be there. He's not here just yet. Oh. Oh. <laughs> the wait is killing me. Thing is that Vilk is here and he seems fine. He seems a little bit sleepy and confused and probably very eager to get out and we're gonna do that soon but I've been waiting for my last piece of luggage for the last 45 minutes and it still hasn't arrived and I don't know if it will. I couldn't let Vilk out of the crate before going through customs which was frustrating but understandable and yes the airline did lose one of my suitcases. So I had to file a report and then eventually we went on our way. Okay, spoiler alert, I couldn't film this part because, you know, I was at customs, but the customs official opened the crate and Vilk ran out <laughs> right there in the luggage hole. He was super excited to see me. He had massive zoomies, making everybody at the airport turn and smile. He was so happy. And I'm so gutted I couldn't film this moment. Sorry, guys. Anyway, I rushed outside so I could let him out properly. And at that point, he was already pretty calm. Well, kind of. Hi, buddy. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like to see that wagging tail. Hey buddy, did you have a good flight? Was it good? Were you a good boy? <laughs> so that's kind of it. That's how I flew from the United States to Europe with my very big dog. <laughs> of course, that wasn't quite the end of the journey. We landed in Amsterdam, then I rented a car and drove across half of Europe to Poland to see my family here. So, you know, a fair amount happened after the flight, but it was definitely a lot more chill and not quite as dramatic as flying. Anyway, I have had a lot of questions about this um, over on Instagram. A lot of you were wondering what it's like to prepare a dog for this kind of experience. Do, drug, do dogs get traumatized? Do they get scared? How scary is it? Um, 
a lot of different questions so I thought I'd take a few minutes here and answer some of them and explain this whole process in a little bit more detail. So one of the most common questions that I got was about documents and being quarantined, like what documents are needed, how much does it cost. So if you're flying your dog from the United States to Europe, you need to get like a special um, health certificate that is then approved by the USDA. So you have to go through a little bit of bureaucracy to kind of get the right documents. But once you do, and once they're approved, you can fly to Europe and you don't have to quarantine your dog. You just, you know, show your documents at the border to customs and they let you right through. PNW Life is asking, do you have to buy him a seat? Can he fly on board with the humans? The simple answer is no, a dog as big as Vilk cannot fly in the cabin unless um, it's a service dog, which, you know, Vilk isn't. So you can fly tiny little dogs in the cabin with you, but big dogs have to go under into the luggage compartment. And you know, it kind of makes sense because if you think about it, there's so little space. Like we always talk about how little leg room there is on planes. So imagine having a huge dog with you there, even if you get an extra seat, um, it's just very cramped. And overall, I felt honestly relieved that I didn't have Vilk up there in the end because he had so much more space to himself inside the crate. Um, and as much as I, you know, I obviously I worried a lot, um, I do think he would have been probably more stressed out um, up in the cabin. Here's another question. I hear so much about lost dogs. It's a bit of a worry of mine thinking about getting a bigger dog than 10 kg. Yes, um, I think it's a worry of everyone's that you know your dog could get lost or injured. But in reality, I was reading some statistics which said that about 400,000 dogs fly every year, I think in just in the United States, maybe around the world, I don't know. but. It's a big number, it's about half a million dogs every year and only a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of incidents are reported. So like, I think it's like 0.01% something happens. Jamie is saying, no food, water or potty break for 12 hours. Breaks my heart him sliding in his own pee and poo. <laughs> I can just imagine that as horrible as it is it's kind of hilarious, but well, you know 12 hours isn't actually like a huge amount of time If you think about it when you go to bed say you're sick or something you can't take your dog out for like a big walk um, you, you know dogs can hold it in for a good amount of time and uh, Vilk ended up being in the crate um, for a total of about 11 hours. So, you know, the moment I got him out, obviously he needed to go and relieve himself, but he was fine. He, there was no accidents, nothing. And if your dog is crate trained and potty trained and the flight isn't too long, it should be fine, you know? Another question is, what are the conditions like in the luggage area? Is it cold? In the luggage area where the dogs are, it's actually a separate part of the luggage area and it is climate controlled and it is pressurized. So uh, when the captain came over to see me and confirmed that Vilk is on board, he also said, I'll make sure that it's nice and warm in there for him, which was so sweet. So thank you, Kaelan, for the best. And then a lot of you expressed a whole lot of concerns about, you know, Vilk being traumatized, scared, stressed out. And I think these are all pretty valid concerns. You know, a dog doesn't know that he is on a plane. It's, it's dark and noisy and weird place with a lot of weird, unusual movements. And, you know, as for us, I think as pet, you know, owners, handlers, we also project some of our own fears onto our dogs and pets and we kind of humanize them in that way, which is fair enough. It's something I do as well. Um, but I guess I wasn't really worried about Vilk getting traumatized because I knew that it's just a few hours out of his life and I knew that I had really done as much as I possibly could to prepare him for this experience. So the way that I prepared him um, mentally was I spent many months, <laughs> many, many months, pretty much since he was a puppy, crate training him. Um, that means, you know, I had him stay in the crate for an hour, two hour, four hours at a time. I put the crate in the back of a truck so that he would get used to the idea of being inside the crate, of the crate being his safe space, of, 
being nice and cooped up and cozy in the crate and of the crate moving around in the back of a truck as well. So crate training really allowed him to get used to the space and recognize the space as a safe space. Okay, so the last big burning question is of course, how did Vilk manage it? How did he feel at the very end of the whole experience? And of course I did worry that something could happen. Like I had that irrational fear in the back of my mind. Like he's my beloved dog, you know, like what if I scarred him for life with this experience? And he was fine. Yes, he was very thirsty. He was hungry. He needed to relieve himself once he got out of the crate, but he was fine. He was just fine, you know? Um, the following couple of days, he was a bit tired and sleepy, which makes me think that maybe he didn't sleep inside the crate on the plane um, because it really felt to me like he needed to sleep off that experience, maybe that stress, but nothing else changed. You know, he was just the same dog that I've always known. He related to me in the same way. I, there was definitely no sense that he was like mad at me or angry at me or that he suddenly stopped trusting me to take care of him. None of that happened. He was just fine, just his usual playful, goofy little self. So at the end of the day, we made it to Europe and we're fine. And I guess this means that a new chapter is about to begin. I have some very exciting news for you coming up in next week's video. Ah, I'm so excited. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. There's so much happening. Okay. Well, I'd love to hear from you. If you've ever had an experience traveling or flying with your dog or your pet, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear your stories, the good, the bad, and the ugly. All right. I'll see you in the comments section. And next week, I'll see you in a very, very special place. <laughs> Hey, if you'd like for your name to appear in these credits, or if you'd like to get early access to all of my YouTube videos, or if you'd like to get access to my making off slash behind the scenes videos for every single film that I publish on YouTube, you may want to subscribe to my Patreon community. There's loads of different perks. Patreon is where I usually post my early life and travel updates, where I make loads of exclusive content and we get a chance to connect on live calls as well. It's a really, really great community. And uh, yeah, if you'd like to see more of me, this is the link somewhere here on the screen. Anyway, see you in the next video. <laughs>